Well, this is Brother Peter with Tidbits from the Word. First of all, may I say, I am not a, uh, I'm not a schooled in the worldly sense person about the Bible. I only know the Bible as itself. I've always used the Bible to answer its own questions. Whenever I have a question in the Bible, I go to a reference that takes me back to the beginning of the first time it was ever mentioned. That's called the first time of mention. Well, that's natural. And the first time it's mentioned, if you go back to that, you can find out what it's all about and what it says and come all the way through the Bible. Some things that were mentioned in Genesis chapter 1 I mentioned in Revelations 22. So therefore, <clears throat> we need to follow those through if we want to know the meaning of a thing. Now, the little excerpt that I have here is who were the writers of this Bible? They were men like you and I, but they were filled with the Holy Spirit back in the Old Testament days even, and God came upon them and gave them the revelation <clears throat> that they needed to pin down and there were some 40 authors in this Bible and those 40 authors were over a period of roughly 1800 years and they wrote 66 books and out of those 66 books uh, many of those people never read what the other man wrote they didn't know each other, they never saw each other. Travel in that day was on foot on different continents and they weren't, didn't have the liberty to go and congregate like we do today, fly a bunch of people to one arena and all these people that know about a subject get together and all exercise their brain power and talk about what they know. And that didn't happen with the Bible. The Bible was the knowledge of God being foretold by other men as they received it from the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the author of the Word of God. Now the Holy Spirit is the third part of the Godhead. There's God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost of the Holy Spirit. Jesus said, I was the Word. In the beginning, I was the Word. And I became flesh and dwelt among you. He was the Holy Spirit, if you please. At a period of time, he acted as, came down and acted in, in men as the Holy Spirit. Entered into them and gave them the utterance of how to write what they were going to write. So that everything that was inspired or breathed by the Holy Spirit, breathed by God, and penned down is correct. Not literarily correct, even though it is literarily correct, but it is scripturally and baptismally and correct spiritually. And that is the thing, inspired of God. God breathed. Only here is the special evidence that the Holy Spirit lives and, and lived in holy men and qualified them to be enable them that they could record their lives and what God did in and through them. And how they they had passed things that they didn't they didn't really weren't involved in, but they could write about them because the Holy Spirit revealed them to them. They had present things that they were doing they could write about, and they had future things that God enlightened them to write about. One of the uh, best ones to look at is in Isaiah 53, where the picture of Jesus coming on the cross is. But uh, throughout the writings of the Bible, many predictions were. God said to uh, somebody, write this down in a book. There's going to be a king 25 years from now, and this is going to be his name, and this is what he's going to do. And then that guy died, and 25 years later, here come that king, and this is what he did, and that's the way God worked. And the Gospels uh, of the Bible 
to promote the oracles of God. And the oracles of God are the ways and the things that God would have us understand and know. You and I can be just like the writers of old, filled with the Holy Spirit, and see uh, things. But the Bible is finished. It's finished. Jesus said, it is finished. He died on the cross. Excuse me. He said, it is finished. The book of Revelations finished it. John's on the Isle of Patmos, and he's writing the book of Revelation. Can you imagine? Here's a guy, he's, he's exiled, he's in prison. And the book of Revelation, by the way, is not the book of John Divine, it is the book of Jesus Christ. And revealed to John on the Isle of Patmos. Now, many things had to happen for John to be able to pen down those things that he penned down in the book of Revelation. The first thing John had to do he had to be revealed from Genesis 1-1 all the way through to Revelation to the end, last verse. He had to have all of that knowledge pass through his head to be able to pen down. 303 verses in the book of Revelation are direct quotes from the Old Testament. 303 verses are direct quotes from the Old Testament. See, they thought John was mad, and they said, this John, he has gone mad, writing all this gobbledygook now. But what they didn't understand was those 303 verses are the keys to open the book of Revelation. And because it's only opened, though, by the Spirit of God to you and I. You and I can understand it because God opened the mind, the spiritual eye, for you and I to understand it. The record that was given us through the words from Genesis on down through and the communication and the recording of the truth of the spiritual truth is it physical too? yeah some of it's physical a lot of it's physical but what the inspiration is is for the spiritual revelation to come through for you and I now we find all the lies of Satan written in the 66 books. Satan visited every single solitary writer that wrote in these books. And he is going to visit you and I on a daily basis, every day of our life. He's going to visit to where on this earth and try to get his little needle punch in and prick us with fallacies of truth. Now, this is one reason I stick right to the King James Version. I have all the other versions. I have them in, in my office upstairs. And I browse them periodically to, to see how a person that says something to me, I can say, well, why, where did he get that from? What in the world? He's way off base there, I believe. Let me see what, and, and I find out what kind of Bible he's using. I see that he's using an NIV. So I go upstairs and get the NIV out and I read the scriptures that he's followed through to get him to a place and find out that the scripture, the way they were changed brought this man to living by works. I asked him, are you going to heaven? And he said, well, I'm trying. Well, I'm doing the best I can. Well, I love my neighbor. I'm doing the best I can to my brothers. I'm trying not to sin every day. And all of these things come down to works. And it's not, it is wor the work of God in you that brings you through, not the works that you're doing on, in the flesh to keep yourself. If you're doing things in the flesh to keep yourself, you're reading the wrong Bible. Uh, what degree were the writers inspired? Some parts of the scripture give exact words like the vision of a, a one said I had a vision another one said the word of the Lord came and spoke to me and I wrote down these words and some parts of the scripture say that uh, I was inspired by the Holy Spirit to pen this down 
I, I was moved by God. Uh, God spoke directly to me and said, pin this down. So there are different degrees in the scripture of how those men received what they received. And uh, there are so many proofs that the Bible is infallible. It has to be God's word. You could take 40 men, 40 men, listen to this, 40 men wrote it. You could take any a group from the world, any 40 men you want, set them all down at a round table and tell each one of them to sit down and write a story and see how many of them would be chapter 1, chapter 2, chapter 3, chapter 4, chapter 5, chapter 6. And, and around the table. No, you wouldn't find one story that would match up with the other story. There would be 40 different stories that none of them would connect. And none of them definitely would have a prophecy that another one that didn't even know that one a thousand years later had the same prophecy and never read the other one. That's the way God worked. And he used people of spiritual character, spiritual character to write. He used men who, who actually, <laughs> many of them weren't educated men at all. And I can see, and, and as we read, that many of them had scribes. They were spiritual men, for instance, like myself. I consider myself a spiritual follower of, of the Lord. But I can't pin down hardly anything. I pin it down, but somebody has to cipher it out and make it work. And a lot of these men that followed God, they had a person that was a scribe that wrote down for them. God put that scribe in their life, and that scribe said, Hey, I might be smarter than you in writing, but I haven't got the insight you have that God's gave you. You, you talk it, and I'll write it. And they came along side by side, and they did the writing so that the prophecy could be fulfilled. Now remember, there's 3,300 verses of prophecy have been fulfilled and predictions made in, uh, in, in just the last thousand years. The last thousand years, uh, 3,300 prophecies of the Bible have been fulfilled. And not one detail has failed. About 2,908 verses are being fulfilled or will yet be fulfilled in the front of our very eyes. Now, in the last thousand years, just think, 3,300 things that were prophesied in here have been fulfilled. Is that not enough evidence for you to agree that this is God's word? Is that not enough evidence for you to agree? This has to be a book divinely written and you can get divine inspiration from God and on this fulfilled, the miracles. Hundreds are recorded in the scriptures. Many happen daily even now. We pray in our church for somebody who, who say has a, my, my wife uh, a few years ago I went up there and she had a, a, they said, you test positive for cancer. We want you to go home, prepare to come in. And then, so we went to the church. We had her get anointed with oil. We all prayed over her. We went back to the hospital and they said, we had a misdiagnosis. There's nothing here. <laughs> yeah, they had a misdiagnosis, all right. God erased that. He, he healed her. And that's just the way it is. And the, the predictions, the prophecies, the uh, uh, adaptability of people that have come. For instance, I'm, I'm, I've been adopted and adapted from being a heathen and a sinner to being a saint. And uh, I claim the Bible. I claim every word in the Bible. Uh, uh, it says 3,800 times that the uh, Bible claims that it was written by the Holy Spirit of God and, and it is written by the Holy Spirit of God and by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit and if you, there's a lot of historical facts that come down to spiritual facts 
historical facts that come down to spiritual facts. Ah, the wicked dead will be judged. The wicked dead will be judged and cast into hell after the thousand year reign at the end of, of, of the judgment. Now, <clears throat> a lot of people say, I don't understand all that. You don't have to understand it. All you have to do is believe it. And you don't have to understand everything. You can believe what you don't understand when you understand it scripturally, spiritually. Uh, my time's come and gone. I must go now. This is Brother Peter with tidbits from the Word. See you next time. Bye-bye.